Revelation 6 and 17. And this is key. And remember, we talked about this overlap. Revelation 6 and 17. And it reads, <clears throat> For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So we go back and find out what are they talking about, remember? Because we want to read the whole pattern here. So look at verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, as blood, not blood itself, but as blood. And the stars of heaven fell, we talk about meteorites, falling stars, fell onto the earth, even as the fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So now, not only are we talking about earthquakes, we're talking about ferocious winds, right? Uh, shaking off the figs. Uh, what else is that a sign of? Hurricanes, tornadoes, etc. All of these things happening in the uh, atmosphere. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. This cannot happen in a quiet fashion. There's got to be a lot of rumbling, a lot of noise. If the mountains are being moved or islands are being moved, this is going to be a tremendous goings on, right? A lot of stuff going on. Uh, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains, fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand so when is this happening when is this happening the wrath the wrath part right well we just if you remember in the fifth seal right in the sixth seal uh, fourth seal and all of that when when did the when did the rapture part come when did the rapture part occur Think about what we've read. Because if you look at the fifth seal, back to what we read. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, the martyrs, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord? This is uh, Revelation 6 uh, going back to uh, verse 9. How long, O Lord? Holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? So these are the, the saints, the martyrs that are uh, under the throne of God, under the altar of God, speaking, calling out to the Lord. How long will it be before they start getting their punishment? In other words, right? And white robes were given unto every one of them. Who is this happening to? These are the saints. These are the martyrs. Right? They're getting their white robes. They're giving their white robes, every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. There's that little while again that Jesus spoke of before. That little while. Unto their fellow servants also and their brethren that they should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So it's coming. In other words, relax, hold on. Be calm, the wrath is coming. Then when does the wrath occur? That sixth seal. Okay, so there we can see that. And then Matthew, of course, Matthew uh, 24 and 29 is where we see the cross-reference uh, to this when Jesus was giving his uh, description to the disciples 
Uh, immediately after the tribulation, Matthew 24 and 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven? Does that sound familiar? Coincides with what we just read in Revelation 6. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. There's that shaking again. The mountains, remember, and the islands. The figs falling from their trees in an untimely manner because of the winds. They'll be shaken. And then shall appear... The sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall appear. Now please, please read this. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. The sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, etc., etc. And then it says, and then, in verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. There's that trumpet. There's that trumpet. There's that overlapping that I spoke to you about. And they shall gather together his elect Who are the elect? Who are the elect? Whenever the scriptures have talked about the elect, it has always been and always is referring to the church. It always refers to the chosen ones of the Lord. It always refers to the followers of Christ. The elect have always been and is always interpreted throughout scripture as the believers. In fact, uh, remembering that we've read, uh, let's see if I can find it here. We read in Matthew, I want to say Matthew 28. Let me see. Matthew 28, uh, verse 22. Matthew 28, verse, oh, 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 wait, 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 nope, can't be that. Can't be that. Uh, let's go back to Matthew 24, verse 22. I must have... Um, yes, okay, that's where it is. Matthew 24 and verse 22. And it says what? And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake. Those days shall be shortened. So... All this time of this tribulation is not going to be shortened except for the fact that there are Christians. It says it right there. And and, and if you continue, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ or there is Christ. So who who is going to say this? Who's going to be pointing out to you? Hey, there's Christ over there. Did you see Christ over there? No, go over there. Who's going to be saying that? Right? For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. Were we not warned about the false Christ and false prophets? And who are we? The elect. And shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Well, if the elect are not around, if the elect are not present, how can they be deceived or fooled? How can the days be shortened for the elect if the elect are not there? All right. So this is what gives me the confidence that the that the saints are not raptured until right before the wrath of God begins. And as we can see, it overlaps uh, with Revelation 6. Uh, Following on to verse 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. We just read it, right? And then verse 31 says what? And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet 
This is the first time we hear Jesus describing this trumpet. So this is why I say that that sixth seal and the first trumpet are overlapping in time. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So you know what? It doesn't matter where you are. You can be in Hawaii. You can be in New Zealand. You can be in Antarctica. You can be in Australia because God is powerful enough. Thank you, Jesus, to send the trumpet, sound the trumpet with the angel and gather us from the four winds. The four winds, north, east, south and west, right? The four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And then he goes on to give us the parable of the fig. So there again is that uh, what we just read in Revelation uh, 6, where the fig tree uh, begins to drop its figs uh, in an untimely way because of the shaking. All right. So uh, I, this is just so, so good. So, so clearly we know now that this does not coincide with the second coming. Uh, this is the first coming in a sense. But in this first coming, we're meeting Jesus in the air, in the clouds. He doesn't have his feet on the ground. So we'll continue this in-depth study. And I want to explain tomorrow, Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, in the live broadcast, what it means to eat the book. Amen? Amen. I hope that you have had an opportunity to enjoy and read and study with us thus far. And I look forward to continued study with us uh, and with you in the next few weeks as the Lord provides. So until then, Shalom.